Today we're going to be reviewing my KLX 140 with a big bore kit and a whole bunch of other goodies and we're going to be answering the question, is it worth it? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just kind of give you guys an overview of what we got here. So this is a KLX 140G slash RF. They're both the same bike, they just changed the names. But uh, what that means is that we have a 21 inch front tire and an 18 inch rear tire and that's what makes this bike so special is it's the only bike that has a pit bike style frame with the full size wheels as you guys know. If you guys have been watching the channel, this is the biggest reason that I ended up buying this bike in the first place is because I wanted something with a small frame but full size wheels big suspension, take up the bumps and rock hits and stuff. Now, if you guys are curious about any of the parts or anything that I've used in this build, all the parts will be linked down in the description next to the like button and that subscribe button. So what we have here is what would start off as your standard KLX 140G slash RF, but we've done a big board kit, we got a hot cam, we have a rev box, we got a whole bunch of goodies in it, and it's been a really awesome and fun bike to have out on the trails, and it's been super, super awesome to progress my skills. So as you guys know, this bike comes stock with a 144cc air-cooled engine and after doing the big board kit I went with the 170 cc kit and it seems to be the sweet spot for power and reliability without having to modify the bottom end of the bike so this has a stock crankshaft now it's fairly well known that the 170 cc kit is about the best kit you can get the best bang for buck without having to do a whole slew of modifications to making it work and it just seems to be really reliable and you can just get out and ride this thing on the trails now these bikes are offered as sort of like a kid entry level bike for like a 10 to 14 year old is kind of what they're listed towards now i'm not 10 or 14 anymore but i still enjoyed the bike a whole bunch and it's been a lot of fun now this bike is intended to be more of just like a play bike well we've completely pushed the boundaries of this bike and turning it into an absolute enduro monster <laughs> And this thing has gone up every single trail I've ever taken it. And we're following 302 stroke, super expensive bikes up some gnarly stuff. <laughs> Right on that power, just bop, 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 bop. So now let's go ahead and let's talk about some of the modifications that we've done to the bike. As I've mentioned, we've done the big bore kit. We did an upgraded hot camshaft. We have a BBR rev box. We've done BBR suspension front and rear in the bike to help soak up those big bumps now that we're going faster. <laughs> We have our trail tech digital display up here. So it's got a speedo, your ambient air temperature, your engine temperature, shift lights, all sorts of goodies stuff. It's super sick. See the dash, we're warming up the bike up to 55 degrees, 13 degrees outside. Oh, this is absolutely sick boys. And their shift light comes on, that's so dope. Beauty dream. <laughs> that's sick. Once again, parts are linked down in the description if you're interested. Now we're also lucky enough that we were able to get the very first D3 exhaust on this bike. And it was the first pipe that BBR started reproducing for these bikes and I just knew I had to have it. It sounds absolutely sick. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's. Now we've put some gummy tires on it, which has really helped with enduro and putting the power of the bike down as the stock tires are just not very good. You know, they'll last a while, but they're not very soft. So you can't put a lot of traction down, especially when you're trying to get up with those hard climbs. So in the front, we have a Kenda Ibex and in the rear, we have a Dunlop AT81EX and this tire is fantastic. They've worked really good as a pair and I've loved having them. Now with protection mods, we can start up with the handlebars. We've got some of these service hand guards. These things have taken an absolute beating and they're still holding up great as well as we've done some SX parts frame guards up here. And then we've got some SX parts engine guards. As you can see, they've done their job and taken an absolute beating and it's time to get a new set and replace those. And then here on the bottom, we have a ricochet skid plate, which has been putting in work and getting used and abused. Couldn't recommend any of those parts enough. For the price, the engine guards, even though they're broken, you can't argue for the price. There's just no one else that makes anything for these bikes. So those are those are just a great addition. The frame guards, absolute must if you want to keep your frame, frame nice and shiny. And then the ricochet skid plate is absolutely necessary if you don't want to pinch the frame and lose its rigidity. Now, probably the reason that you're here is you want to know more about the big bore kit and what I have to say about it. So we've had the big bore kit on here for about 55 hours. 
And let me tell you, I have never looked back since we put this thing on. It's made a world of difference. You're able to get into a hill climb situation and just roll on the throttle and this thing goes. Just plowing snow, look at this boys. And I've also put a gearing swap on the front end to gear it down so it's a little bit geared down lower. So it's got a little bit to less top speed, but we got more acceleration, more torque, and you're in the power band more. So it's great. So now second, third gear, fourth gear, it's even that much more usable when you want to do hill climbs or if you just need to pull the clutch in, rev it up and just pop and hop up, hop up a log, hop up a rock. It's a lot easier with a little bit more power and the gear, the bike geared down. Now it really is a significant difference between the 140 to the 170cc kit and I can't recommend it enough. So if you're interested, I'd definitely go down below, check it out. It's worth it. It's an absolute banger. It makes a lot more power than it does. Now it's not gonna blow your socks off if you're still someone trying to learn. It's like this perfect little sweet spot that's not too much that you're just gonna instantly be flipping it over and on your butt cheeks all the time, but it's got more than enough pep in its step to get up any of those hill climbs. for a dirty pass on that one. Now, as I said, in addition to the big bore kit, we've also done the hot cam, which brings the power more into the top end of the RPM. So as you keep rolling on the throttle, it just keeps climbing and it this thing absolutely screams. Now talking about screaming, we've also stuck the BBR rev box on it. And what that does is it raises the red line and advances the hot curve of the bike. So pretty much this thing now revs past 11,000 RPM, just screaming and it's just making power all the way to the top end of the RPM band. So you have this huge power band of power power just ready to be delivered anytime you roll on that throttle. So if you're gonna be doing any of the big bore kit or any of this stuff to your bike, you're gonna to need to swap out carburetors. Now the factory carburetor is only a 20 millimeter carburetor and it's really tiny. Like even for the 140 cc, that's a really tiny carburetor. So what we've done is we've ended up sticking a Makuni VM26 carburetor on there. Now there is a carb conversion kit also listed down below that you're gonna need if you're gonna be adapting the VM26 carburetor onto your KLX 140. Now the conversion kit comes with everything you need. It comes with adapters to go to the flange from the intake side of the engine, as well as it comes with a conversion throttle cable to work with your standard throttle. Now it's well known that the one of the things that plugs this bike up the most and stops it from making power is the exhaust. So as you guys can see here, we got our BBR D3 carbon fiber exhaust. And this thing is absolutely sick. It's worked a treat. I love it. It sounds incredible. Absolutely banger. Love it. it. Sounds way better than a lot of the exhausts I've heard online. It doesn't sound just like overly dramatic, but this bike really does start to sound like closer to a 250 than a 140 once you stick one of these pipes on with all the upgrades in the engine. So now we've started to cover some of the performance stuff. Let's go and let's talk about reliability, which is equally important. You want to be out on the bike. You want to be riding it. You don't want to be working on it. You don't want to always be breaking it and replacing parts and spending money on it. You want to put this thing together and you want to go ride and that's exactly what i do i have not had to touch a single thing in the engine we've put 55 hard hours of riding and ripping on this thing and it's been absolutely flawless so if you guys are concerned about reliability well this is why we went with the 170 kit and not any of the other larger kits now there are kits available that go up to 212 cc's correct me if i'm wrong down in the comment section below but i do believe it goes up to you can put a 212 cc with an upgraded stroker crankshaft kit and you can port the heads and do a large exhaust and a whole bunch of other things if you want to really get down into that rabbit hole, but you're going to run into the issues with reliability. Now these bikes have been proven reliable. They came out in 2008 and people have been doing the big bore kits in them since 2010. So they have the reliability dialed in on these 170 kits. So I can't recommend it enough. You do your same old oil changes frequently and you're, other than that, that's all the bike needs. You just put some oil in it, put some gas in it and head out and hit the trails. Now, if you guys are gonna be attempting this yourselves at home, make sure you know what you're getting into and you have at least a repair manual from Kawasaki that shows you how to do the disassembly as there are a couple reverse thread bolts and you're gonna to have to change the intake and the exhaust valve just a little bit, a little bit on the tighter side of the tolerances because there will be some clacking if you do uh, standard tolerances on the intake and exhaust valve. So make sure they're a little bit on the tighter side of within tolerance and that'll help quiet it down. But other than that, there really is no reliability issues. Maintenance hasn't gone up. It really is just change the oil like you normally would in a stock 140 and this thing's just got more power and more pep in its step and it's sick. 
Now what's nice about the level of power increase that this gives you is it isn't just constantly wearing out your chain, your sprocket and your tires. It's got enough power to spin the wheels, but not enough to just absolutely destroy your tires as soon as you roll on the throttle and just spins like crazy with too much wheel speed. So it's nice so you can keep that kind of stock performance of your parts. Now, if you are gonna be doing the big bore kit and all these upgrades, I would recommend going to an O-ring or an X-ring chain. They're just a lot stronger than your standard non-O-ring chain, and it's gonna last a whole lot longer. So now let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about my history with the bike and what it's been like. So far, I've had zero issues with the engine. Now, it can be a little finicky trying to get the tuning right in the carburetor, as it is with any carbureted bike when you're doing these swaps and conversions. So that can take a little bit of finagling, trying to get the tuning just right, your main jet, your pilot jet, and your needle settings to get those just right but if you are curious we currently have ours on the third clip position so there's five clips we have it on the middle clip position then we have a 190 main jet and i have a 25 pilot jet now we are here at sea level so zero feet elevation take that into consideration as it completely depends on your elevation on what jetting you're going to be running now personally i've been loving and enjoying the hell out of the power that this thing delivers it's super fun super crisp it's always just right there. You can just roll and snap onto the throttle and get up that hill climb or just zip off into the trails. So now let's go ahead and we'll do a little mini here pros and cons list of the bike. So we'll just do pros are you're gonna have more power. You're gonna have more power up top. You're gonna have a bit more power down low. The bike's gonna rev higher. The bike's gonna be more fun to ride. You're gonna be able to easily do wheelies. If you're still struggling to pop the front end of the bike, this bike now has plenty enough power. Now you should definitely be able to still do wheelies with the stock 140, but this thing makes it a whole lot easier because you can really just pop that front end right up. Now it still works perfectly with the electric start. It's still super duper easy to start. It really doesn't feel any different than the stock 140 kit other than it just has more power overall. So there's really, that's all the pros. Pros is you're just gonna get more power. Now what are the cons? It costs money and that's it. That's about the only con I have for this all these parts and the conversion of doing the big bore kit and the camshaft and the rev box and the suspension and everything we've done to this bike. The only con is it costs some of your dollar Ray Mee's hose, you know? So other than that, there really is no cons. I have no cons about this kit whatsoever. It's just been absolutely fantastic. Absolutely love it and wouldn't change a thing about it. So now who is this bike built for? Well, at this point, I'd say it's a perfect intermediate level rider bike. Now, if you're this is your first bike, it might be a little bit too much and it might scare you a little bit, but if you have any sort of other experience riding dirt bikes, you're gonna feel right at home. This KLX chassis feels really, really solid. Brakes are disc brakes, both front and rear, so you're not worrying about old crappy drum brakes. It's electric start, no kickstart, you just press a button and go. So that's really convenient. The seat height on this bike, as you know, is fairly low. Even my girlfriend who's five foot four can fit on this bike and ride it comfortably and not be scared of it. But there's plenty of power that if you wanna get up on it and rip it, you absolutely can. You can send this thing on the jumps and it's just a good time. Now, I would say if you're a heavier set rider, like you're over 200 pounds and you're like six foot four, this bike might feel a little bit cramped for you. Now, for comparison, I'm about 145 pounds and six foot one, so I'm quite a light set rider. I'm a little bit on the taller side, but I'm a light set rider. So this bike has really fit me and suited me well out on the trails. I really like how light this bike is, and that was one of the original reasons I purchased this bike in the first place, was that it came in at like 206 pounds, which is ultra light for a four stroke bike that's got a full size wheel set on it. So I would say this bike is probably best suited for someone who's an intermediate rider, could be anywhere from like 14 years old to an adult. I've seen guys online who are like 60 years old building this bike and going out and riding it and they're just enjoying it and loving life out in their farm ripping around. Or you could be someone like me. I'm in my mid twenties and I'm out taking this thing on some serious hard enduro trails and this thing performs fantastically. And it's great, you drop the bike over, it's light, you can pick it back up, you can maneuver it around, no problem. Now, if you're looking to do some motocross with this, this isn't exactly the perfect bike for motocross type riding, but now that we've got the BBR suspension in the front and in the rear, this thing can definitely handle some jumps a whole lot better. With the stock suspension, I could hit a tiny whoop in third gear, just kind of cruising along and the thing would be bottoming out and I'm not even a heavy set rider. So having the BBR suspension in the front and the rear is an absolute must, especially if you plan on jumping this thing at all, as well as if you're gonna be taking this enduro riding or out in the trails, I can't recommend enough all the protection mods like the service hand guards, the frame guards and the skid plate. Those are like crucial pieces 
that are gonna help save your bike. So in conclusion, I think that this is a fantastic kit. If you're interested in picking up one of these, I have zero hesitations and I think you should definitely do it. If you can afford it, I definitely recommend checking it out and looking into it. Now it's not the most pricey build. There's definitely more expensive builds out there, but I wouldn't say it's on the cheap end either. It does cost a grand to, you know, the exhaust alone from BBR cost me about 600 bucks. Just to give you an idea, then you still got the big board kit, the carb conversion, and then building the engine. Hot cam, rev box, it adds up. So it's a little bit of an expensive build, and it's gonna, depending on where you are, I'm in Canada, so I'm in Canadian dollars, it's gonna cost you closer to 2,000 Canadian dollars. So you're probably looking at around 1,200 US dollars, maybe a bit more if you're looking to do this yourself. But I can't recommend it enough. It's been absolutely great. It's a fun, fun bike. Lots of power, not too much power, but there's lots of power. There's more than enough to have a good ass time on the weekend with the boys. This is a perfect bike if you're gonna go out camping, you wanna rip it around at your camp spot and just cruise, have, have a brewski in one hand and go rip it a root, rip a roof. This thing's fun and you're gonna love it. You're gonna have a good time. If you guys enjoyed today's video, if you learned anything, if you have any questions, go down below, leave them in the comment section below. I will answer them. Leave a like while you're there. Click subscribe for more. We got a lot more banging videos coming, a lot more riding. We got a brand new bike coming up. You won't want to miss it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.